I spend a lot of my time on Facebook, too much of my time on Facebook, but I've got to keep an eye on what's going on in the world. And when I came across this photo, I had to have it for contact. So I went searching for it on the internet. I started out by going to the UK Ministry of Defence photo library because uh, I figured they were, they were probably British photos. I can't remember what made me think that in the first place, but it turns out they weren't. But I went looking on the British MOD photo library to start with and I came across these photos which have a story to go with them in the photo library. I wish the Aussies would do this kind of stuff too. But anyway, this looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to nab these photos and this story and see what I can do about uh, a spread in contact with them. First thing I'll do is just a quick rough edit on the story. It gives me a sense of how long it is, how good it is, and then I'll save it as a text only file. Then I hop over to Photoshop to check the photos to see what we're dealing with. Uh, file size is huge, which is great although they're not all the same file size which is a bit of a not an issue or a concern it's just a fact but it probably means uh, they've already been cropped by the photographer but that's fine great photos no sharpening required excellent color and they tell their own story Popping back over to InDesign and open a nice clean template. I'll see what I can do with these photos. Starting with this one, which is the obvious being the biggest. Uh, line that up, give me a little bit of space for text on the left hand side. There's also a bit of deadish space at top uh, to put my headline into. I won't use this font though, I will try and find out what. Game of Thrones actually uses in their uh, promotional material uh, and try and see if I can emulate the font in the actual promotion videos and there we go there's Game of Thrones looks rather skinny and beveled so I'll see what I can do to emulate that and what I found in my long list of fonts is one called Big Caslin which is actually a serif font. That means there's little doodackies on the end of the letters. And it seems to be pretty close, but I don't like it plain just in InDesign. So what I'm doing now is going back to Photoshop, uh, where I'm going to do the headline in Photoshop with a bevel and then bring that back into InDesign. So here we go, a little bit of space there between of and thrones to account for the center line in the pages. Uh, I also want to try and match the color that they used in the promotional photos. Uh, and then add a bevel to that. So here we go, layer style bevel. And I played around with this to try and get it just right. Or what looked fairly close to me anyway. Uh, and in the end, I think uh, it's not too bad. And being fairly happy with that now, I'll delete the background layer and save it as a Photoshop PSD file, which preserves layers. And then I can bring that into InDesign and replace the plain text headline with my new beveled headline. And I think that looks... Uh, it's probably a little bit skinny. I think I'll come back and redo that, but it looks fairly close at this time. But I could probably give it a little bit more impact by adding some glow effect behind it. And yeah, that looks nice without overdoing it. 
Now I can bring in my text and see about placing that in the deadish space on the left hand side. Um, it's also a nice little curiosity that your man on the left there seems to be reading my text, so that's um, a bit of an interest point, which helps me to decide to put the text there on that side. The overflow text then can go on to the next page. Now I've just had a little brainwave about how to add another little piece of interest to the text here. This is what's going to be called a drop cap. So I'll go back to InDesign, oh sorry, Photoshop. I copy the M, make a new file for that. Paste the M into the new file, delete the background, go back to the headline and copy the layer styles and then paste the layer styles onto the M so that all the bevel is exactly the same as the headline. Now I can bring that into InDesign, get it about the right size and alignment, and that M being the first letter of members, now add some interest. I want to align that properly as well with the bottom of the A there, and I want to align the point of the M to the left edge of the text, which is all just part of that nuanced, balanced, aesthetic thing I've been talking about through these videos. Now I want to get on to some text editing, only this time instead of the rough cut I did earlier, I'm doing the actual specific final proofreading of this, uh, which also includes going back to the internet to get some details and confirm some tricky bits like the standard of St. George for example, I wanted to know how that is properly presented, so the word March is not capitalized at the end of it, I found out also needed some words there to describe the northern border of Westeros. All of this of course is time consuming and fiddly but it adds authenticity to my version of this story. It adds nuance and adds contact style to what otherwise might be just a plain copy and paste of an official press release. But it's also important at this point in the process for me to figure out exactly how many words I have left so that I can judge the space that I have left over to put the photos on this second page. Now having read the story so very thoroughly a couple of times I have decided that this photo must be used on the second page and that's because the crowd and the interaction with the actors is very important to the story so I can't not use this photo. And after a little bit of fiddling around, I've decided on what I'm comfortable with as a placement for that photo. I can get onto the text, get that into columns, balance it out so there's no widows and orphans left, and only then I will be satisfied with how much space I have left for a photo. Now it turns out this is a skinny photo, but that's okay, I can go into Photoshop, pick one that works well as a skinny, crop it, and then place it onto the page. Uh, the actors are important, of course. The juxtaposition with the red coats is good, but it doesn't actually need to be uh, showing those soldiers' faces. So with a preview of that to get rid of all my guidelines, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that and can call this one done. Oh, except for that headline which I want to go back and have a rejig at. But you'll have to wait until the 1st of June to see it. So make sure you're subscribed to Contact Magazine and you will be sent a link to Contact Magazine next Saturday on the 1st of June. Check it out then. Cheers for now.